we're really excited to have Emily Jabinski as our keynote. Welcome, Emily, who is probably doing the uh, She Didn't Start the Fire <laughs> dance all year this year. Hi, <laughs> Emily. Everyone's favorite Marxist lesbian. Because why the heck not? Um, so welcome. I'm going to keep this going because we have four more minutes that I have to talk. Um, I'll introduce myself first. So those of you who don't know me, my name is Emily Drabinsky and I'm the current president of the American Library Association. I also want to say thank you to the conference organizers uh, for your work in ensuring that this is a safe event. It's been very shocking to me and probably shocking to a lot of you to see the way library workers, uh, some of the most trusted members of our communities have uh, been vilified and attacked for the work that we do on behalf of the public. Like many library workers in this city and around the country, I have been subject to intense harassment for what I believe and who I am. And this harassment is unacceptable. It's unacceptable when it happens to me and it's unacceptable when it happens to you. Uh, Tim asks, David Lankes, among other people, is encouraging discussion or rethinking around neutrality as the value of librarianship and promoting intellectual honesty. Do you think mm -hmm. there is a place in the values of librarianship for neutrality in light of the current challenges facing the profession? When you're highly politicized, neutrality becomes very difficult. Um, I think you know, it's a topic I've thought a lot about. And, you know, I'm a, I, I'm, I'm a materialist. I believe in the real world that if I buy this book, I can't buy that book, right? That like budgets are limited, shelf space is limited, work is limited. Um, and so it's hard to sort of make an argument for neutrality when, you know, just at the, at the level where we got to make a decision about things. Um, I'm Emily, uh, and I'm a librarian. I just wanted to say thank you. I just wanted to say thank you for bringing up libraries and classroom libraries, but also school libraries of all kinds, public libraries and higher education libraries who have been under attack in similar ways. Uh, but I think your point that public education needs to be a site of socialist organizing, I think libraries really do too. And that hasn't, I haven't seen that for the first working in libraries, so I think there's a real opportunity here to both connect what's happening in public education, what's happening in libraries, but also we need some help in the, in the libraries, we need to be on the agenda of social organizing. So uh, I just want to get up to my 